All right, okay, folks. Adequate notice of the August the 9th, 2018 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice on the agenda of the meeting on the bulletin board in the Municipal Building 1000 Route 10, Township of Hanover, and by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice on the agenda to the following newspapers. Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with the Township Clerk. Have a roll call, Mr. Administrator. On roll call, Committeeman Gallagher. Here. Committeeman Faramaska. Here. Committeeman Mahalko. Here. Committeeman Cahill is excused. He's on vacation. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Four members in attendance, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise, those that can, and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Remain standing for a prayer. Thank you. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in axioms which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all of the people of Hanover Township. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, gentlemen, at this time, customary for us to open the meeting to the public. A motion to open. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. Anyone who would like to address the Township Committee at this time can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Seeing none. Hearing none. Motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Administrator. Okay, Mayor, members of the committee, we have a letter addressed to Denise Brennan, the Superintendent of the Recreation and Park Administration Department. And it is from Lori Burkhardt, and it says, due to personal reasons, I will be resigning my position as a dial-a-ride dispatcher as of Thursday, July 26, 2018. It has been a pleasure, and I couldn't have asked for a nicer group of people to work with. Sincerely, Lori Burkhardt. May we have a motion to accept the resignation. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. As we continue, we have the approval of the Township Committee's July 12, 2018 regular meeting. May we have an approval on the uh, minutes? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Faramasco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. Now, ordinances, ladies and gentlemen, for public hearing and consideration of adoption. I'm going to ask the chair and members of the committee if we could first take ordinance number 18-2018. Uh, and the reason for that is we have three land use ordinances that I would like the Township Committee to give their consent to convene the public hearing for anyone to speak on those three ordinances. As it turns out, the Township Committee cannot adopt those three ordinances this evening because the Planning Board has not met to uh, provide their report and recommendations to the governing body. Understood. So uh, I would first ask your um, indulgence that we have the public hearing first on ordinance number 18, which is not a land use ordinance. So in, in that regard, uh, I'll advise the Township Committee that we have the proof of publication that ordinance number 18-2018, which is an ordinance of the Township Committee, amending Chapter 117 of the Code of the Township, entitled Dogs and Other Animals, to establish the position of Municipal Humane Law Enforcement Officer, and then amend the position of an Animal Control Officer. And this is all in accordance with new regulations uh, issued by the State of New Jersey. So we have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full on the, uh, in the daily record on July 18th. So at this time, may I have a motion for the Township Committee to convene the public hearing? So moved. We have second. a motion by Mr. Uh, Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call for public hearing, Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Faramaska? Aye. Mr. Mahalko? Yes. And Mr. Francioli? Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard on ordinance number 18-2018. Would you kindly state your name and address for the record? Yes, Terry Baird, 180 Persephone Road in the Whippany section of Hanover. 
Um, first, I wanted to congratulate you and thank you for, for going through with this. I know it's mandated by the state, but I know you guys would do this anyway. Um, I am concerned about the position of animal control officer section. I would like to know if it has, um, will there be any changes in our contract with uh, St. Hubert's? The, the answer is no, no, to the best of my ability. Uh, when the uh, township attorney's office drew this up, they felt it was incumbent that we just recite the fact that we do have an animal control officer. But the primary section here is to address the new regulations promulgated by the state and the Morris County Prosecutor's Office that we have that humane animal person. So the only um, changes for animal control officer were to changing the, the verbiage from animal or dog warden was correct. the old. No. Um, That's correct, Terry. Okay, yeah. so I, I wanted to make sure that yeah. I, I read that correctly. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, how, oh, how quickly will our new humane law enforcement officer be appointed? That person has already been designated yeah. by the chief. chief of police and uh, he's a member of the detective bureau. <clears throat> oh, perfect, thank you. Yeah, that was done. I believe uh, two months ago as mandated by the prosecutor's yes. office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 18-2018? Hearing none, seeing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. A motion by Mr. Francioli, Sorry. seconded by Mr. Gallagher on roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover in the County of Morrison, State of New Jersey, amending section, uh, I'm sorry, amending chapter 117 of the Code of the Township entitled Dogs and Other Animals to establish the position of Municipal Humane Law Enforcement Officer and amend the position of Animal Control Officer be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the August 15th issue of the Daily Record. May we now have a motion for adoption? So moved. So moved by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Faramaska. On roll call for adoption. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted. <clears throat> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we will now open the public hearing for the next three ordinances because they're land use ordinances. Uh, all three ordinances were published in the daily record on the um, 20th, just to give you the correct dates. Ordinance number 19 was published on July 20th. Aug uh, the ordinance number 17 was published on the 18th of July. We had three different publication dates. And ordinance number 19, summary for ordinance number 19 was published in the Friday, July 20th issue. That was a very large ordinance of 35 pages, so in accordance with state law, the township planner was able to do a summary of that ordinance. So at this time, I would ask for a motion to convene the public hearing on ordinance number 17, 19, and 20, because they are land use ordinances, and I believe, Fred, that would be okay, since yes. they're all the same. Yes, Joe the same uh, area of discussion. Correct. Um, may we have a motion so to convene moved. the public hearing? Second. second. We have a motion by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So at this time, are there any members of the public wishing to be heard on ordinance number 17, 19, or 20? Name and address for the record. Yes, hi, Terry Baird, 180 Precipity Road in the Whippany section of Hanover. And um, 
I have questions in reference to number 19. Um, number one, I, I think, and that the purpose of this is to clarify and make it easier to understand front, front side, all that, a lot of verbiage. Um, I think I read the 35 pages. I think I got through it twice. And I got confused as all get out. I would just like go to the building department and like ask because my brain wasn't having it. It, it, it has some complexity because it's based upon so many variables, including uh, heights of buildings, et cetera, that are involved in it. So, uh, but it was, uh, its intention uh, was to clarify and simplify definitions of the yards, both the uh, front side and rear yards. That's what it was. But is there any particular portion of it that yes, you found? The, Go ahead. Um, the, it, it keeps, um, Referring back to the use of the uh, building inspector to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, if the building inspector makes decisions, how is that going to affect the planning board if they, I mean, it's like, it's rather, rather subjective for the building inspector. I mean, am I wrong in that? I yeah, I, I, I think that um, you're bringing up a very good point in that the planning board Ten of us spent probably two hours on this with our planner, trying to go through, coming up with a, a rational plan. There's just lo lots, unfortunately, don't come in geometric, similar rectangles or squares, and they often don't front on on the street, and they're corner lots, and some of them are lots that go from one block onto another block. So where's the front yard versus the side yard? So we struggle with that. So what I'm going to do, rather than read you 35 pages of that, I'm going to ask Mr. Branchow to try to give you um, a summary of, not the ordinance, but a summary of what we provided so that our building inspector has a lot more to work with. Because in the past, the building inspector really had uh, major challenges in and, interpreting and let this. me interject the reason that I bring this up the, the to narrow it down more is the fact that there have when I look at it and I even just go down Persephone Road and um, you get to certain places and they have a fence in their backyard but in reality it's really their front yard but when that development was put in it was approved for them to have that six foot high fence you know, particularly by um, the end of Persephone Road by DMZ or the automotive place right in there. And that's just one place that in particular that I, you know, pick up on. So you already have pre-existing. So how is, how is the building inspector guided to make these decisions when that development went in and that was, that's how it was done. You know, same thing on uh, Ridgedale Avenue in Sierra Knowles. There's so, Blaze, two, the two, question two, really two, is two how does this new ordinance impact a pre existing condition? With all zoning regulations, first of all, this by state law, if something is legal today that will be legal tomorrow under this, it will become what's known as a non conforming condition, more commonly known as grandfathered. So, anybody who has a right to a fence or anything today will keep that right. It will not be required to tear anything down or change anything that they already have if it's legal. All right? This would only apply proactively in the future. Uh, the real intent of it, though, was most typical interior lots won't be affected by this. They, they're not really the target of this. The target of this are things like through lots, uh, or weirdly shaped lots, or lots with double frontages, uh, unlike mm -hmm. a corner lot. And we typically will get questions from the zoning officer, uh, someone applies for a permit for a shed, or a pool, or something like that, and the zoning officer doesn't know what's the side yard, what's the rear yard, and those things determine what the setback requirements are. So the intent of this, uh, simplified is to try to 
clarify those circumstances in those types of unusual situations that are not the typical situations so that both applicants and the zoning officer and the boards will have more guidance on how to handle those situations. Now there's no, you can't cover every situation in an ordinance, so there is a section of the ordinance that says these are the guidelines to follow in trying to apply these rules in any particular situation, but in some cases you're going to need an interpretation. And that's where the zoning officer is given that power. He's given that power already by state law to interpret all zoning regulations. If someone disagrees with that interpretation, they have the right to appeal that to the Board of Adjustment for an interpretation. And again, the zoning officer is only going to be making those rulings in cases that don't go to a board already. Um, in other words, a residential typical case where someone wants to know how far do I have to be from the property line with this will depend on is, is that a side yard, is that a rear yard, is that a front yard? That's the kind of thing that we're trying to deal with here. Through lots, you know what a through lot is, mm -hmm. it goes through from one street yep. to the back street but it's not a corner lot. Under the current ordinance, that in everything behind that house is currently a front yard. Right. He's got two fronts, in mm -hmm. front of the house and the back of the house. He has no rear yard. And under our zoning regulations today, you can only put things like sheds, decks, and things like that in the rear yard. Mm -hmm. So you can't have that. And you can only do fences and things like that that are six feet high if it's in the side or rear yard. So it's very limiting for somebody with a through lot. This ordinance would fix that and allow that to be treated as a rear yard like it should be. So that's really what's behind this. Okay. I still um, feel like there, there could possibly be problems down the road giving the, that much power of decision to the building inspector because he might, or she, there was one, which might, uh, you know, especially because I've sat through a lot of the planning board um, uh, meetings and it always tends to be the corner lots. You know, and that, and the board of adjustment, and you hear for hours on side yard, front yard, and all this with those corner lots, and you know, so what makes one person's corner lot able to have that further fencing so that they're not cut short in their rear yard because of their two front yards, as opposed to somebody else? Because there have been a lot of um, allowances for for that rule through the means that I've been sitting through. Well, Terry, he has that power already. Mm -hmm. um, anytime someone comes for a permit, the zoning officer has to interpret the code. Um, and that's his best judgment based upon the rules that are in the code. So this really isn't expanding the powers of the zoning officer. It's merely giving him more guidance and saying, if it's still unclear, it's your call. But again, if someone doesn't like the ruling that they got, they have the opportunity to appeal that to the Board of Adjustment, mm -hmm. both by our ordinance mm -hmm. and by state law. So we're really not expanding the role. We're merely just uh, clarifying okay. his role. So. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And just for the record, I misspoke, Terry. It wasn't 35 pages. It was a little shorter than yeah. that, but it, it seemed like, like 35 it. pages. You read like 35 pages. It sure yeah. did. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Okay. You okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard concerning ordinances 17, 19, or 20? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearings so on moved. all three ordinances. So we moved. have a motion by Mr. Francioli. Second. Seconded by Mr. Faramaska. Now on roll call to close the public hearing only. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. And now, uh, in view of the fact that we don't have the report and recommendations on all three ordinances from the Planning Board, I would like to recommend that the Township Committee carry all three ordinances to the September 13th meeting, at which time I believe we will have those reports. So may we have a motion now to carry ordinances 17, 19, and 20 
to the September 13th meeting. And just for the record, that township committee meeting will be starting at 8 p.m. and not 8.30 p.m. Yeah. Motion to carry. We have a motion by Mr. Fermosca, mm -hmm. second by Mr. Francioli. On roll call to carry the three ordinances. Mr. Francia, uh, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved and will so noted for the record for the next meeting. Now, as we continue, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lengthy uh, list of resolutions as a consent agenda. Are there any questions from members of the Township Committee concerning any of the resolutions? Motion approved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Francioli, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call to approve the consent agenda of resolutions. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermoska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. And as we continue on the back page of your agenda, we have the payment of bills, $9,503,858.94. Motion to pay the big bills. Big bills. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Fermoska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher on roll call. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Farramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. We have three <laughs> raffle applications. Third of the budget overall. I know. In That's one right. Shot. In one shot. We have three <laughs> raffle applications. Del Barton Mothers Guild, Creature Comfort Pet Therapy Incorporated, Ooh. and Whippany Park High School PTO. May we have a motion to approve the three raffle applications? So moved. So moved by Second. Mr. Francioli. Seconded by Mr. Gallagher. All in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. Mr. Chairman, members of the Township Committee, that clears the agenda of the Business Administrator, Township Clerk, and I'm sorry, I have to take that back because we have to go back to the consent agenda. We have two resolutions, which are items that were discussed in conference work session. We can't forget that because the Director of Planning will get very upset. Oh. And they are. So we'll go back. We have two resolutions dealing with appointments, and they were discussed oh, yeah. by the Township yeah. Committee in conference work session. The first is a resolution of the Township Committee appointing Carol S. Giorgio to serve as the alternate one member of the Board of Adjustment in filling the unexpired two-year term of office of Judy Arati, which term of office shall begin on September 4th and expire on December 31st, 2018, all in accordance with the municipal land use law at NJSA 40 colon 55D-69. And the additional resolution is a resolution of the Township Committee appointing Environmental Commission member and uh, Green Team Chairman Phil Glowey to serve as the Class 4 alternate two member of the Planning Board in filling the unexpired two-year two term of office of Howard Olson which term of office shall expire on December 31st, 2018, all in accordance with the municipal land use law at NJSA 40 colon 55D-23.1. So I would ask for um, a motion and then a vote on both those resolutions. Um, so moved. Second. Yeah. We have a motion and second. Question? Yes, I just had a question in terms of the um, class two position that's an open now. We needed to have. I'm, I'm we, sorry, class four position. Yeah, Did we I needed say? to have a member of the oh. environmental commission uh, on the planning board, or a member of the planning board, if you will, be a member of the environmental commission. So as a result of it, we're fortunate in that we have a very seasoned member of the environmental commission who's been very active and who has helped drive sustainability awards within Hanover Township, Phil Glowey, step up. Right. So he would be fulfilling the alternate two position. Alternate two position is class four. Class four. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Olson is currently alternate one. Correct. Okay. Yeah, he that's, was. All I want to do is clarify. Yeah, that. no, he Thank was uh, boosted up, or he yes. was elevated because we had. Um, yes. We had a resignation exactly. at that time. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mahal. So. Right. Yes, and that's why. Uh, Phil will become the class four alternate two Thank member. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so now may we have a motion? <laughs> so moved. So moving, okay. Mr. Gallagher, second? Second. By Mr. Faramaska on both resolutions. 
Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. <clears throat> so approved. And now that clears the agenda of the Business Administrator Township Clerk. Thanks, Thank Joe. you, very Mr. Good. Administrator. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, gentlemen, once again, I'd like to open the uh, floor to the public. Motion to open. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the floor is open. If you'd like to address the Township Committee, please do focus from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Terry. Hello. Terry Baird, 180 Persephone Road in the Whippany section of Hanover. You don't need to cringe that I'm coming up again. Oops, sorry. Um, but I, I realize that you're changing your meeting schedule mm. and the way that you're holding your meetings. But I couldn't find a, like anything online about it to know like what was in the consent agenda, you know, as far as the meeting changes. So, and I know you devote a lot of time to these meetings and and stuff like that and I can appreciate changing the format but would it be uh, good to put it post it on the on the internet on the web page yeah, uh, I, I think Terry now that we've taken action on the new schedule uh, that Joe will see that it's uh, put up properly well, uh, until now it was yeah. not official right yeah, what happens now Terry just as we do for the reorganization meeting once the action is taken by the governing body, it's posted on the bulletin board. Mm -hmm. The resolution will be published in full in the daily record, and it will go on the website. And in fact, the uh, summer edition of the newsletter goes out next week, and it's, there's a story in there. There's an article okay. in the newsletter next week. But as the mayor points out, the township cannot post anything until it's first approved by the governing body. So the whole schedule will be on the website, will be in the daily record in the issue of August 15th, next Wednesday, posted on the bulletin, bulletin board, right. so we cover it all. And the work sessions will still be in the back room? In the conference room, that's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. are welcome. And it should be noted, too, that those work sessions, unless it's legal, is open to the public. You can come, sit, listen, hang out, unless it's a legal issue. Yes. Or personnel. Or personnel. Or personnel, correct. Yeah. Otherwise, all, all meetings are open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the public is welcome to come. Uh, it's not like we're trying to exclude, but we, there's a lot of work that needs to get done. Yeah. And that's, that's stated in the resolution. As a matter of fact, if, if you want a copy, you're welcome to it. Thank you. The okay, floor is still open. If anybody else would like to address the committee. Seeing none, motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. gentlemen. Committee Ben Gallagher, how are you? <coughs> Pretty good. How are you doing, Ron? Good. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about the concert, the concert series, and I just want to thank the DPW um, for their setup, their takedown, the way the fields look, and the impression, first impression, and the uh, impression everybody gets at Hanover Township, and how beautiful it is, and how hard the guys work to make everything look that way. So Brian Ferran and the guys, thank you very, very much. There's something here I also want to point out that Brian Fran and I talk about periodically is years ago in another life uh, we used to play music all the time and we used to play at the high school for the fireworks and at that time the stage was being rented from Summit or from the county the late Ralph Politi Jr. said you guys are crazy for renting a stage let me call Mayor Panulo we'll get your stage for nothing well, since that phone call Ralph Politi Jr. made and the relationship we have with East Hanover and Brian Ferran and Mark Macaluso, every time we need the stage, not only do we get it for nothing, but East Hanover DPW comes, sets it up, then comes the following day, takes it down, and takes it back to East Hanover. That's at least five to $700 each time we use that stage. So I, I want to thank again the shared services and our great friends in East Hanover. And I want to thank the, the late Ralph Politi Jr. for making that initial phone call. He did a lot for everybody all the time. And this is one of his gifts that just keep on giving. If I might interrupt Mr. Gallagher, but Brian Ferran mentioned to me that that stage now is probably reaching its uh, useful life. And we were talking that it might be possible for the Township Committee to reach out to East Hanover to see if they might want to purchase a new stage no, jointly, us, jointly in other words have it as a shared purchase between Hanover and East Hanover that would be beautiful that would be beautiful it, it takes 
a small event and makes it into a big event. Even with the uh, the 5K for the Ed Foundation, when that stage sets up at Whippany Park, it looks like it's an event. Perception, it just looks great. Yeah. It's and, big, uh, it's big I stage. would support that. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Piece. It's, it's beautiful. So thank you, everybody. And of course, Mike is probably going to touch on that, but the rec does a phenomenal job. But I can't tell you how many people say how great these fields look. So I wanted to touch on that too, and not to mention all the other work that the DPW does every day. Uh, I want to also point out that in conjunction with our rec department at Hanover Township Day, we are going to introduce our MC Teen Concert Series, which is with our Drug Coalition. We're putting together a special teen concert series to give our young musicians and artists a chance to show off their skills in front of their friends. Back, back in the old days, there was a thing and a saying that said, if my friends can see me now, and it was also a big saying, dare to dream. Well, we're going to give these young musicians and artists a great opportunity, and with Denise Brennan and Mike Mahalko and the support of the rec commissioners, we're going to set up like a 15-minute spot for each person or each group to perform. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to make a lot of kids that might not get a chance to shine, to shine in front of their peers. And it's going to also achieve uh, the age group that we've been trying to get at Hanover Township Day, the middle school kids and the high school kids, not just the youngest people and not just us older people. We're really going to work hard to get that group, which is one of our target groups in many of our areas, to try to help the kids with what we feel is important character education. Uh, Two more quick ones, Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, school and park traffic safety. Fortunately, children don't watch this on YouTube. Maybe my daughter does once in a while to make fun of my hairstyle. But, uh, I just want to say that we are having our special back to school meeting, and I don't want to say back to school yet because everybody's going to go nuts. But uh, what we do at that point is everybody on our committee that has a different official position in town will look at are our crosswalks completely repainted and ready to go? Our signage, our public safety notice, uh, our crossing guards, uh, their certifications will be brought up to date on all of that. Uh, HDPD basically runs the show on where we are uh, and where we have to be with Brian Ferran from DPW. And of course, every decision we make has to go by the entire governing body, and we're all involved in all the decisions we make to make our vehicular and pedestrian traffic in and around our schools and parks much safer. So thank you guys, and we will have that meeting, and I will update you at our next committee meeting on where we are and our readiness. Uh, the last thing I'll say is we're finally going to put launch our website for our drug coalition, and we are no longer going to call it the Mars Area Coalition for Education and Positive Choices. We're going to call it the North Jersey Alliance for Education and Positive Choices, mm. because now we have 14 towns involved in That's our drug coalition, great. including towns from Hudson County, Essex County, and of course, Mars County. So it's going to be the most comprehensive site. A lot of people have tried to do it. A lot of people have not done a great job. A lot of people used it for political purposes, and we've seen them run it into the ground. But we have a lot of beautiful, hardworking people that are worried about drugs and alcohol in our youth. And we have incredible programs with the county on opioids and heroin. But what we're trying to do, too, when working in concert with them, is hit the kids in the beginning when they're vaping, when they're, when they're introducing themselves to alcohol with their friends, tobacco, so marijuana, all of that. So I want you to know that we are working with Fred Knapp, Brad Seabury, Sheriff Gannon, and like I said before, 14 towns. And Hanover Township PD and Chief Roddy is right by my side on this. So very, very proud that this is another example of what we could do in Hanover Township when we make a few phone calls and get together and focus on a task, a single task. Ron, I can go on, but that's it. Thank you for the time. Oh, that's, and thank that's, you, everybody. That's excellent. And on that note, by the way, and, and uh, Commissioner Gallagher mentioned it, <clears throat> but coming up on Wednesday, <clears throat> excuse me, Wednesday the 15th, <clears throat> from 6 to 7 in Rockaway, the uh, prosecutor's office <clears throat> will be uh, holding a, uh, <clears throat> in, in Rockaway, the prosecutor's office will be holding a, uh, uh, at uh, Christ Church up there, a uh, uh, lecture seminar on opioids uh, to go over this matter, the serious matter of opioids in, in the county. I'm so glad that Fred Knapp is, uh, is taking it on at that point. So. 
I, I think that's open to the public as well. It is. You're pretty and sure it's free, free. right? And it's free. And it's free. free. And, it's free. and so, uh, you know, uh, you have youngsters. You don't have youngsters. So it's something that's uh, critical, critical to you. <laughs> Excuse me. On that note, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm busy choking here. <laughs> roads. Road season is well underway in Hanover Township. The good news is, despite the weather, despite the storms, Valley Forge Drive is done, Cross Road is done, and North Jefferson Road, which is a very, very critical artery, that is done as well. The next step along North Jefferson Road will be to add what we call a walking trail on North Jefferson from Nye to DPW. Um, this is greatly needed. Township Committee has supported this and we look forward to its implementation. We hope to have that completed. Hopefully the weather cooperates by back to school. Um, next steps in terms of road construction will be locust. Locust should be done during the month of August. And then we're looking at a section of Woodfield Drive from Shamrock to Whippany Road, which is scheduled to be done in September, weather permitting. Next subject area is the Environmental Commission, and this is a big initiative, and Phil Glowey, you just talked about him in terms of him stepping up uh, to, to volunteer as well with planning. Phil Glowey got together with Dennis Wilson, brought together a concept to the Township Committee. The Township Committee supported that concept, and the concept is developing what they call a solar-based integrated electric storage system, more commonly known as a microgrid. Microgrid is something that can collect, collect the, the solar power as well as store it with batteries. The great thing about this is this will be able to serve the electrical needs of this township's municipality. Uh, it'll be a small grid and they're in the process now of issuing, uh, working with the business administrator, what they call the RFP. They're working on specifications now. We hope to be able to have this in implementation early 2019, hopefully in the spring of the year. So this is a big initiative for us. It's a good initiative for our taxpayer because it will not be costing our taxpayers direct money. Um, so that's an added plus. Lastly is my appeal to public safety and it concerns street lights. People are out walking, it's nice out at night. If you see a street light that's out, please take the time to report it. How do you report it? You can report it in one of two ways. You can report it by going on a township website under the JCPNL um, logo. You can report it there and it's real simple. Just write down on each of those poles there's a number. Write down the poll number. If the poll number is not present, give them the address. Or, back up, you can contact our police dispatcher's line, not the emergency line, the dispatcher's line at 973-428-2512. Mayor, that concludes my Thank remarks. you, John. No, I appreciate it. Uh, just a point of clarification, just so that we don't have our all our citizens in our township thinking that our solar grid is going to power the entire municipality. Uh, that's the way that statement came in. That, that solar grid is to power the municipal facilities. Right. Uh, and uh, store power and power. Yeah. So just, Campus. Just, not not just, the all of Hanover yeah. Township. So, so keep, <laughs> don't, don't, do don't, sell your, don't sell your generators yet. Uh, you know, just, <laughs> good, just good, so we good know. point of clarification. Son of a gun. John, we, <laughs> John, we just have the issue about the uh, street lighting covered in the newsletter as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, a, it's very important, street lighting for public safety, obviously. You really need to. And, oh, by the way, taxpayer, you're paying for that street light, whether uh, it's on yeah, or whether or not. it's not. On demand. Yeah, that's for sure. Committeeman Mahalko, how are you doing? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, doing very well. It's that middle of the season, middle of the summer. We're very active in the rec department. Um, going through my assignments, met with the seniors. Senior citizens have their meetings on the first and third Wednesdays. Uh, if you're of that age, it's a great group of people. I enjoy going. It's uh, uh, 12 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, they, they are such an active group and a lot of fun people. They have bingo. Um, they're also accepting, 
they're accepting uh, women for the bowling league. They're setting up a bowling league that starts in September and goes through May. It's on Monday mornings. Uh, check out the website. There's so much stuff the seniors are doing. Um, I, I could I could take up an hour with all the events that they have going on. Uh, really good group of people. Um, Mr. Coppola is the president. He's doing a fine job running it. Uh, so so check it out again. You can check that website out through our website at the Hanover Township. Check the uh, second uh, what, uh, Wednesday. Uh, First and Wednesday. third Wednesdays are the meetings. Yeah. And they begin 10:30 or so is social. People come and and stop by and chit chat for a while. The actual meeting itself starts at noon and uh, yeah, they'll go through some business. So if anyone's they interested they can show up. Yes, yes. Right. And, and uh, again, as of the age you can sign up and become a senior, senior, senior member. Um, Let me do that so yeah. as I turn Are you ready? You've got like three more years, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, rec department. A lot of good stuff going on as uh, Ace had touched on before we had um, our summer concert series had wrapped up. It was a terrific session. Uh, we had four, four wonderful concerts. Um, and we really got to thank East Hanover for the use of their stage. Uh, they're very generous to allow us to do it. And I think that's a great opportunity if we can do a, a, a shared purchase of that. That would be fair and uh, a nice thing to do. Uh, again, also our DPW, and they do such a terrific job on our field. Uh, honestly, it looks like a carpet out there. Um, the, the boys really do a great job. And, and also, I'd really like to thank our sponsors. Uh, we couldn't have this without all our sponsors. Oh. Wegmans was the title sponsor, the name sponsor. They, they contribute quite a bit. Uh, ShopRite, uh, there, there's such a list of them. Um, you know, check them out, patronize our sponsors, and, uh, and when you see them, thank them. Uh, let them know that you were at the concerts and, and you came out. There were, you know, a lot of people attended. Um, our summer camps, we had our summer plus camp and traveling teens. Uh, we're in July. They have wrapped up. They were uh, all sold out. Uh, fantastic programs. They travel all over the place, going to different parks and venues. Um, but we still have some camps going on. We still have two specialty camps, the Lego camp and the baking camp. And I believe there's still some room in the second session of the baking camp, maybe a spot or two left. Uh, so if you have some younger children interested in baking, they should come out and sign up for that. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to our Bee Meadow swim team. They had a five and two record this year. Their season is wrapped up. They did a terrific job. Quite a few kids. I was surprised. I believe there's almost 80 kids. Uh, quite a few kids uh, participate in that, and they do a terrific job. Uh, congratula congratulations to them. Uh, while we're talking about the Bee Meadow pool, on July 28th, we had the annual water carnival. Over 750 people. Wow. wow. Over 750 That's people came to the water car. Wow. So, and it that tells you how much fun it is. And, and Participants? It, well, they were at the pool that day. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sure. Wow. I don't think my father was in there. Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a terrific program. Um, this pool is still open through, through Labor Day, so come on out. Enjoy the festivities. Um, let's see. Events coming up. We have a few events that are coming up that we need to make note of. Hanover Township Day, September 8th, 1 to 5, Malapartis Park. Ace had touched on it. We're going to have some of our uh, local youngsters playing. Uh, all kinds of fun things going on. There will be bounce houses. There's a train. There's uh, a lot of um, you know, people sponsoring different tables and different committees out there. Uh, it's a great way, great time to come and see your neighbors, your friends from the town. Um, the, the fire will be there, you know, the fire departments will be there with their trucks, the uh, first aid will be there also. So uh, again, come on out. Uh, Whippany, Whippany Park Marching Band will also be in attendance this year. Uh, as long as their schedule still permits, uh, they're still going to be there also. Uh, paddle boats will be in the ponds, so you can take a ride on the paddle boats. Those are courtesy of uh, Morris, Morris County Parks. Um, and we still need some volunteers, so if uh, anybody is interested and has some extra time, come out for a couple of hours, uh, contact the rec department, and we'll set you up. Mm -hmm. uh, no experience necessary. Um, also, and I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, you can help me out with this one, too. We have an inaugural Corporate Charity Cup softball oh. game coming on. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> it's going to be Bayer employees versus Wegman employees. Uh, <laughs> Here's the special part. Both companies have agreed to donate $5,000 each to the inter Interfaith Food Pantry. Um, awesome. 
Yeah. Yes, I, I, I can't say enough. For, for both of them to come out, compete against each other, have a softball game, I believe you're umpire, and I think we're going to be umpiring also. You're all going to be out there, so if something goes afoul, we'll yeah. like, that's, that's it. Uh, September 20th. Um, September 20th, Thursday night, 6 p.m. Um, and that's going to be at Black Book Park, Black, correct? Black Book Park, under the lights. Yes, Black Book uh, Park. And, the concession uh, stand will be open. And so much of the community that's going to be a part of that. So much of the, of the municipal community. The fire companies mm -hmm. uh, will be there. They're don fire companies are donating. It's interesting. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Fire companies, Whippany Fire Companies donating their uh, baseball equipment from their softball team to the Bayer folks. So right. baseball bats, gloves, mitts, etc. will be there. And likewise, Cedar Knoll's fire company is donating their baseball equipment to the Wegmans folks. So yeah. we, you guys can see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, I, I think it's going to be tremendous. I think it's going to be a fun night. Should Donation fun night. tickets yeah. are free, yes. but your 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 ticket to come is to bring something for the food pantry. So whether it's canned goods or packaged goods or something of that yeah, nature, that's yeah. that's all we're looking for. So yeah, please, great. please come out. It should be a fun evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, we're hoping it'll be the start of, uh, as we say, it's, it's going to be the uh, charitable the charity classic, yep. and that uh, it'll be an <coughs> annual type of event. Whoever, yeah, hopefully, whoever uh, uh, wins on this one, uh, maybe he'll challenge uh, another uh, corporate metallic the coming year. I bet we'll get a little rivalry. Rivalry, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, finally, one last note: um, we are in need of building proctors for the rec center and the, and the buildings around town and dial a ride drivers. So if you have any interest, want to know what the qualifications are, please contact Denise at the rec center and uh, she will tell you what the, you know, what, what, what the requirements are, what the availability is, and, and they are paid positions, so you do get paid to do it. Uh, so reach out to Denise at the rec center. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, dial ride is such an important program and you, each of us will be helping ourselves out with that. Uh, I don't think you need any special qualifications. You need a CDL for that, I don't think so. No. So, uh, you know, we have vans and we have cars, and you'll be able to uh, help our neighbors get the doctor's appointments and other appointments with dial rides. Very, very yeah, Township cars. You'll be using township vehicles, not your own vehicle. Yeah. And, and again, the proctors are there to open open the doors, let the people in, monitor the buildings while they're in use. Great program. Always was. So. Always was. Ace, yeah. you want to say anything? You never yeah, I, I just want to add one thing, too, to what Mike just said, Committee Member Halco, that um, it took Ron and I about 20 minutes of serious arm twisting, but to call the game, we were at, we were able to lock up the great Howie Olson, who's the voice of the Wildcats and has been for many, many years. Uh, so how he agreed to do it to do it terrific and you know he's going to be adding his two cents every chance he gets so it's going to make it a, even a lot more fun nice. you give howie a microphone put a sporting <laughs> event in front of him oh yeah and he, he's going to just go crazy so it's going to be beautiful yeah. I, I, I gotta i gotta thank both those corporations uh absolutely they are so civic minded they've been great neighbors they, they're great neighbors i like to see some of our other neighbors step up a little bit too but, you know nice. yeah, I, I hope this is going to set an example for other communities other towns that do like so of charity events, but this is one yeah. premier one, so I think we're really proud. Before Ron closes out the meeting, I, I asked for permission to say uh, one more topic. It's not as fun, but it, it's just a little concerning, and th I think I have a pretty good answer for people. My, my mom, who's a senior, taught in Hanover Township for 30 years. If I said her age, she'd, she'd probably kill me. And uh, <laughs> But uh, yesterday she called me very upset. She was getting phone calls all day, and one of the people actually left her a voicemail that they inspected her premises and wanted to speak to her. So she immediately called me very upset, very nervous, and we hear about the IRS schemes and we hear about all of these different things. But the fact that this person referred to her being on her premises made her very upset because she lives by herself. So I immediately called Chief Roddy and it, the, the chief advised me to do what we advise everybody to do. Please call the police department. My mom immediately called East Hanover Police Department they came over, two guys, they spent some time with her, they checked her windows, they checked her basement, they checked her doors, they checked her phone, they called back a couple phone numbers. These people prey on, on senior citizens. And you know what, I know we get a lot of calls, and, and Officer Lippman and Detective Lippman, thank you very much, we appreciate everything you do. But since I became, became uh, on the Board of Ed, Chief Gallagher always said, just tell them to call us, tell them to call us. So if you get a couple phony phone calls or you get calls where people say they're inspecting your property, 
please call the police department. These guys are the best. We say it every two weeks from this dais. These guys are the best. They're here for you. And we're here for you, too. And to get that phone call from my mother was pretty upsetting because as, as smart as she is, as tough as she is, as much as she raised all of us, she was very, very upset and scared. So it, it's not good. So if you do get those calls, you can, if you share it on Facebook, Ron and I will probably respond immediately and advise you to call the police, but please call yeah. the Hanover Township PD. There That's are, it for me, Ron. There, there, are, there are so many scams going out there right now. You know, if, if we have people who ran these scams put their creative juices together in a positive way, we'd really be getting somewhere. Uh, you know, there, there's, a, there's another scam that will call you up, and you don't have to be a senior to get this one, where they tell you that they're Microsoft or somebody and that they're going to shut down your computer network because you've been violated. So if you open their network on the link that they give you, and you give them your password and everything else that you sign in, they'll make sure everything is fine. Uh, that's, that's another way of breaching security. You've got to be so very careful. There's the IRS scam where you frighten people by calling them up and saying that unless you, uh, you know, send uh, $5,000 to this particular email address, etc., uh, the IRS is going to come and lock you up. Well, IRS doesn't use emails to lock you up. They'll knock on your door, trust me. So uh, that, that's the way that works. Um, it's a shame, but you have to be vigilant about these things. We, and by talking about it, we're more vigilant about it. I think that's what's good. And speaking to that, um, on a couple of closing remarks, and then we're going we're to go into our own session. Um, this Friday, um, um, we will be meeting with uh, Civic Plus. So Civic Plus is an organization that's going to be redoing the Hanover Township website. Uh, we have for some time been looking at the website in a way to try to make it friendly or easier for people to navigate and get through. Civic Plus uh, is an organization that creates templates for the websites, maintains websites for numerous towns in the area, Morristown being one of them. We are working with them right now to update our website to make it much easier for you to get to search engines, for you to get to information that you need quickly on our website, and we want to always drive you to our official website. Uh, there's a lot of noise out there with websites similar to, to Hanover's, etc. Uh, but truly, if you want to know what's going on with power situations in the township or traffic situations, accidents, anything of that nature, please, 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 www.hanovertownship.com. That's where you're going to go. But in the future, and by the end of the year, you're going to see a new face on that. So we're very, very pleased over that. Mike did a wonderful job of telling you about the Hanover Township uh, Charity Classic. We're, we're really thrilled over that. We're going to be working to see that uh, uh, come to fruition this September the 20th. That's a Thursday evening, by the way. Um, the um, Civic, uh, oh, oh, I know what the other one was. The, the concern that we had, and by the way, yes, you probably saw this too. There's, a, there's people that are being, uh, that have shown concern, uh, and rightfully so, over the uh, amount of uh, uh, mosquito population uh, lately. With all the rains and all the uh, moisture that we've had, uh, we've got an issue there. Uh, the Board of Health will recommend, uh, if you feel that in your area, your yard, your neighborhood, etc., that you've got, in your opinion, a mosquito population problem, uh, 973-285. 6450, that's the Mosquito Control Commission. Uh, please give them a call. They will respond and take a look at what the matter is and, uh, and see, that, uh, see that it's taken care of. Um, that's that, it for gentlemen that's, that's for county. me. That's county, correct? Uh, uh, excuse yeah. me, that's county. Did, <laughs> I say, did I say state? Yeah, that is county. No, it, it is county, but just to clarify, it's not through the town, but it's through the county. Yeah, that is, that the is the county, county uh, mosquito, mosquito Control Commission. Commission. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what you want. And I think we've been working them on Bee Meadow, too. Haven't they been working you with them on the pond? Oh, yeah, they, they do a lot. <laughs> They've yeah. been busy this year. Yeah, yeah. no, go quite a bit. That's all I've got. So, gentlemen, is there anything else from the committee? If not, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you, folks. You decide. Oh, my God, Joseph, <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> do a lot of work. God, yeah. Tonight. Yeah, we had a lot of resolutions. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.